Now let us take a look at uh, two different algorithms based on a public key and private key concepts. We will first take a look at LGAML based digital signature algorithm and we will understand this entire algorithm using a simple visualization. So let's consider agent X and agent Y and uh, they have to communicate using an insecure channel. So this I say is a public area because whatever that is being posted in this area is available to third parties or any hackers. So this is this insecure area wherein whatever we post will be available to everybody. And we can call this area to be the private area. So whatever I'm going to write here will be private to agent X and whatever I write here will be private to agent Y. So communication this side and this side will be private. So we'll see how a signature gets created, how message gets transmitted and how agent Y verifies the message that he receives from agent X. So for this we have to go through a series of steps. Let's start with agent X. The first two things are creating a public key and private key. So for creating this public key, this agent X starts with a prime number. Usually this prime number should be a very large prime number. But then for uh, understanding, we'll take a smaller number here, say prime number P is equal to 19 and he selects a generator G is equal to 10. This generator is nothing but a primitive root, a primitive root. So if you just take this element and write it to the power uh, 10 power 1 mod 19 to 10 power 18 mod 19, you're going to get all the elements in the set that is 1 to 18. What is this set 1 to 18? It is nothing but set of all integers mod 19. So we have already discussed primitive roots uh, in our discussion on defi element key exchange. If you are still confused about primitive roots, please take a look at that. Try to understand how to generate or how to find out primitive roots for a given set. So for all the set of integers mod 19, the primitive root is, one of the primitive roots is 10. So we have to select a primitive root as G. The next important thing is GCD of G and P should be 1. That is G and P should be crow prime numbers. So GCD of 10 and 19 is 1. We have selected the right values here. The next thing is we have to select agent X actually selects a value D. The value of D should be between 2 and P minus 2. It should be greater than equal to 2 and less than equal to P minus 2. So 16 is very well uh, between 2 and P minus 2. What is P? 19 minus 2 is 17. So D is a secret value selected by agent X and only agent X knows the value of D. After selecting D, he is going to make some computations. He will compute E. E is nothing but generator that is generator G power D mod P. We know what is G. G is 10. D is 16. Mod P. P is 19. So substitute all the values. You will be able to get E is equal to 4. So all these values are being computed by agent X. And uh, once when he computes these values, he, he puts the public key. The public key here is P, G and E. So this is the public key for agent X and he puts that in the public domain so everyone knows what is the public key for agent X and there's a private key too the private key is 16 so whatever value is selected that is the private key and this private key is secret to agent X so we have finished our first step in uh, Elgamal digital signatures that is generation of public key and private key after generating public key and private key, there are other steps that agent X should perform before transmitting the message and the signature. The next step is he should generate that signature. So let me go and erase all the ink on the slide. So what agent X has done, he has accomplished a public key and he has identified his private key. Now he has to generate the signature. Let's see how he generates the signature. So Agent X wants to send message M. Let's assume message M to be a value 4 to agent Y. So what it means, agent X wants to send 4 to agent Y. 
but then you should generate a signature and attach it to this port. We'll see how he does that. And one important condition here is this message that he has taken should be less than P or P value is 19 here. The very first step he does is he takes this message 4 and feeds it to an hash function. So you can think of an hash function like SHA512 or SHA1 or SHA2 series and he feeds that to the hash function. Let's assume that it's just an assumption here say uh, when you feed it's actually when you feed uh, 4 it's actually 4 that is coming in. So when you give in 4 to this hash function the value that is coming in as output is 14. So this is the message digest or the hash value represented as M. After that step, he does few more steps. He selects K, which is a random integer and K should be such that the GCD of K and P minus one should be one. So what is P 19, 19 minus one is 18. And uh, let's assume that he selects K to be five. So five comma eight in this one. So the next step that agent text does is he selects a random integer k and GCD of k and p minus 1 should be 1 and uh, the value that we have assumed here is k is 5. After that he is going to compute a pair of values y1 and y2. y1 here is nothing but generator for k mod p. We know what is g, g is 10, k we have selected it as 5, mod p is 19. So y1 is equal to 3. You can compute this and check y1 will be 3 and he also computes y2. What is y2 here? y2 is nothing but this is the formula for y2. k inverse m minus d y1 mod p minus 1. So first thing is we have k. We know k mod uh, 19 right. What he does is he takes a k inverse mod 18 that is he finds the inverse of k with respect to mod p minus 1 that is mod 18 or else uh, to be very clear let me erase this and explain it again we know the value of k is 5 and what is p minus 1 it is 18 now you have to find the inverse of 5 with respect to mod 18. So that is k inverse. The inverse of 5 with respect to mod 18 is 11. So 5 into 11 mod 18 will be equal to 1. That is 5 into 11 mod 18 is equal to 1. So 11 is the inverse modular multiplicative inverse. We have already discussed modular multiplicative inverse in our uh, previous lectures. So using that we find the modular multiplicative inverse of 5 with respect to mod 18. Here why we select 18 is the formula is k inverse mod p minus 1. p we already know it is 19. So after finding k inverse what we are going to do is we will substitute that in this formula that is k inverse that is 11 into m is the hash value we have uh, achieved minus d. d is the secret value that is from the private key right we selected d to be 16 so this is the private key value and y1 is what we have computed here mod p minus 1 that is 19 minus 1 is 18 so when he substitutes all these values he gets y2 so these two pairs of values are being computed say so uses a random integer k which is a secret and also uses d which is a secret value he computes y1 y2 and then now the signature is nothing but y1 and y2. So y1 and y2 forms our signature here for agent x. So agent x is going to put the signature. We can say this is the signature. And then it tags the plain text message. So this is the plain message that is not hashed. So this message along with the signature is now being sent to agent Y. And the task that is lying ahead with agent Y is he should verify the signature. He should somehow validate the signature. Only then he will know that the message has not been altered and it is coming from a valid source or an authenticated source. So we'll see how agent Y validates the signature. For that he is going to perform certain steps. 
is going to calculate V1. How we calculate V1? It's nothing but G generated G power M mod P. He gets the value of G and P from the public key information of agent X. So this is the public key information of agent X. P is available, G is available. The message is coming in. Using this message, you can very well compute the hash of that message using the same hash algorithm. So you'll be able to compute M. So that is what is the thing here. So he uses the hash algorithm, gets the hash value of 14. So G power 14 mod 19, that is 16. You call that to be V1. The next thing that agent Y is going to compute is, is going to compute another value V2. V2 is based on these parameters, E power Y1 and Y1 power Y2 mod P. So E is from the public key of agent X and Y1, Y2 is the signature that we are receiving. Mod P, we know P is 19, again it's from the public key. All this information is available to agent Y. So you will compute V2, P2 will be 16. So if you substitute the values and compute V2 will be 16. So you will say that the signature is valid only when V1 is equal to P2. So you have a valid signature only when So you have a valid signature only when V1 is equal to P2. So that is the comparison he does. So that's how the signature gets validated and uh, agent Y can very well know that the message is, has been sent by an authenticated source and the integrity of the message is uh, and the integrity of the message is maintained here. So now let us look at a hacker. Can you really create Y1 and Y2? Can you create this uh, digital signature? You will not be able to create this digital signature because he doesn't know the values for K and D. The private key is very private to agent X. To create Y1 and Y2, the hacker needs the private key which is not available to him. So creating an Y1 and Y2 is not possible for the hacker. And again, can the hacker you know, if the hacker alters the message alone, if he sends some other message, obviously the hash value here is going to be uh, something else. It's not be, it will not be the original hash value that was generated by agent X. So here, when the message is getting altered, the hash value changes and thereby V1 will not be equal to V2 for the digital signature that was sent by agent X. So our hacker cannot really mess up with the details here because of the private key that is used for generating the signature and uh, the validation that happened at the agent Y sent. So that's how Elgamal digital signature works. I've also pasted the algorithm as theory here. For those who are not uh, very much uh, comfortable with the visualization, they can go with this uh, theoretical explanation here. So it very well says select P, select the primitive root of P, we selected G to be 10 and P to be 19 and select a value D such that D lies between 2 and P minus 2. So we selected D to be uh, 16 there. Compute E is equal to G per D mod P and publish the public key and private key. So public key is P, G, E for agent text and private key is D. So after publishing pub public key and uh, now identifying the private key, so we will never publish a private key. Private key is very private to the sender. Now once when public keys and private key is uh, defined, we have to go and create the signature. How the signature is getting created? A random integer k is selected such that it's between 1 and uh, p minus 1. And GCD of k and p minus 1 should be 1 because we are going to find the inverse of k. That's why this uh, condition is here. So compute y1 is equal to g power k mod p. We are computing y1. And then we are finding the inverse of k. We will find inverse of k with respect to mod p minus 1. And that is the criteria why we have this condition. GCD of k and p minus 1 should be 1. Only then an inverse exists for k. So compute this and apply this in this formula. y2 is equal to k inverse m minus d y1 mod p minus 1. And y2 and y1 will form the signature. So this is the digital signature and you can very well see the digital signature was created using the random integer k and this uh, 
as private key of the sender so these two things add uh, add to the security of our signature now a user b can verify the signature this is uh, say agent y right how we verify the signature he computes v1 and v2 v1 is nothing but generator power the hash value mod t so this is the hash value of the message generator and the prime number g and p is known from the public key m is the hash value so you'll be able to compute v1 and v2 is nothing but e power y1 y1 power y2 mod p e is from the public key y1 y2 is from the signature and mod p is from the public key so p is from the public key so he computes v1 and v2 if v1 equals v2 then agent y or user b can very well say the signature is valid and the message is from an authenticated source and the integrity of the message is also fine so that's all about elgamal digital signature hope you have understood this scheme it's very easy most of the steps are uh, like what we have seen earlier with elgamal crypto system and the only thing is the private key is uh, used for creating the signature and then the same thing is validated using the public key of the sender